Welcome to Cardiovascular Research uh, on Life. Um, my name is Tom Guzik, I'm Editor-in-Chief of Cardiovascular Research, and uh, we have a great honor to host today uh, Professor Stephanie Dimler, uh, who for years has been an unquestionable leader uh, of cardiovascular medicine, uh, made several uh, contributions that were or are being translated into a, a clinical practice. Uh, and uh, for all these uh, contributions, uh, she has recently been awarded a gold medal uh, by the European Society of Cardiology. Congratulations, Stephanie, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. So uh, what is your secret uh, uh, of success? What do you think should be a secret of success uh, uh, for, for our young uh, uh, viewers? Uh, is it ambition or is it talent? I think both ambition, talent, but also I think curiosity and hard work and finally also luck is important to be successful. That is true. The uh, sort of uh, uh, accidental sometimes discovery leads to a, a great uh, success. Uh, and what was your uh, uh, early ambition at your career and, uh, and life? So I started very early on with endothelial cell signaling and discovered nitric oxide uh, regulating pathways, um, nitric oxide synthesis regulating pathways. Later on, I studied a lot of uh, repair processes, including proangiogenic cells, and more recently, we were studying microRNAs, non-coding RNAs as a really new field, uh, which I think has an interesting, gained interesting insights into the biology of the vasculature and also potential therapeutic applications. So it's a large spectrum of, uh, of interests and, uh, and discoveries. Which one would you identify as the most important one or the, the, the one that you are most proud of? Can't say. Um, <laughs> even if you would look for objective parameters, the citations are not so much different between the different fields. So I left all the aspects and I, I, I think finally time will tell which discovery was most important because this will be a discovery where we finally can end up help patient, helping patients. And this is uh, to be seen. So if, you th if, if we think about the recent basic science discoveries uh, around the world, uh, uh, what do you think is uh, uh, the most promising uh, uh, aspect that basic science is delivering now uh, uh, to clinical medicine or can deliver? It's a difficult question. There are so many interesting fields and sometimes it's difficult to um, judge or to, to foresee uh, successes in the clinical life and, and in the, in the patient's uh, lives in the end. Uh, for me, I think that in the last years, these um, systems where we discovered uh, like tissue cell organoids and, and, and models where we could learn better about patients. I also think that the single cell sequencing and, and more detailed technologies to gain more information of, pa pa of patients, not only into looking into cell culture and mice models, but rather going deep into patient phenotyping, hopefully will give us some uh, novel insights and, and be more close to the clinic than basic science at the bench only. So in a way, achieving uh, uh, phenotyping closer to what uh, cancer uh, medicine has been doing for many years, and I think cardiovascular medicine is coming close, is uh, uh, coming close to uh, using proper precision type of medicine in, uh, uh, in, in, in utilizing the tools that basic science has developed. And uh, um, the route between discovery and, uh, and clinical implementation is very long. Uh, why do you think this is the case? Is there a way we can speed it up? There are multiple reasons. One of which is, of course, that the regulatory uh, aspects take simply time. So you, you need to, to watch for chronic treatment. You look, have to look for safety. And I think there are a lot of efforts by many societies and also by funding agencies to speed up the discovery also from the basic science field, but still uh, also the patient trials later on take time and we have to wait to see the first results before we go ahead and moving too fast may be also dangerous. So there are of course some things which we can do, but also some limitations to the step itself. 
And, uh, you know, when I observe uh, uh, the breadth of your uh, interests and contributions, I always wonder, uh, uh, you always realize very early in the course of discovery of certain uh, uh, mechanism and molecule that it is a very promising, uh, uh, promising future uh, uh, topic of investigation. How do you make this decision? I know it's very difficult to answer, but I will press you because it's a good secret to know. Yeah, I think you, you also see uh, the successful stories more than the ones which uh, failed. So um, I think curiosity is what makes uh, actually my scientific life very fruitful, I would say. And, and um, I was always intrigued by new aspects coming from biology and to, to, to see what their potential for translation might be. I think this was my personal strategy. There are other people who are also successful working on one molecule the whole life and they are successful. So. It's simply a, a way how you are driven to do science rather than a strategy to be successful or not. I agree. And I think it's, it's all about curiosity and uh, uh, the amount of uh, attempts that you make. That, yes. uh, as you say, people see only the, the surface and they see the successful attempts and they do not appreciate how many other attempts there are. So, uh, so, so it's, it's, it's a very frank and, and direct answer. Uh, for basic science, it is sometimes difficult to compete with clinical sciences, with clinical discoveries. Um, do you think uh, uh, basic science can compete uh, with clinical uh, science in public eye? I generally believe it should not be a competition, but should be synergistic. So I feel that we should be much more closely interacting bench to bedside and bedside to bench and then bringing people's minds together. I think there is a, um, sometimes a lack of interaction because there are so different daily duties and things in the lab versus in the clinic. But with respect to the public awareness, I think I, I can't complain that I think basic science get also a lot of public awareness. Um, and of course, clinical findings are more important because patients' lives are changed. So I, I think this is not um, something, it's just natural, I think, and, and it also deserves it because this is what people invest for. Uh, in the end, in cardiology. And what is the, um, according to you, the weakest aspect of the way we conduct basic science research at the moment that could be improved? I mentioned this before also that, that we, the model systems which we are using may have their limitations, and but we also don't have better models. So you know that we do a lot of mice work and so, but we certainly also all know that these models have limitations. On the other hand, if we don't work with living organisms and only with cell culture, tissue engineering constructs, we also miss a lot and we can't replace the whole organism. So I think this is a difficulty uh, in our research, particularly for translation. And I also feel that sometimes we maybe as basic scientists stick too much to the needed details. Sometimes you could maybe move faster into translation be for understanding everything on the molecule if you were looking for uh, patient applicable studies. So maintaining the uh, scope on the big picture is, uh, is, is important. Yes, at least, but, but uh, I also, I think it's also important to understand the basics. So there, as I said, there are different types of persons and we need to have different types of researchers to, to get the full picture. But for success in clinical translations, we have sometimes to ignore also, or let's say, accept that we don't understand everything before we move further. And how did uh, COVID change your work? And how do you think COVID has affected uh, uh, science? So I felt that COVID was bringing people very much together. So particularly at the beginning, we had very intense uh, Zoom conferences trying to exchange simply knowledge. And I know, for example, I'm, I'm was talking with Christoph Belzholz because he had a paper on bioarchive uh, on single cell sequencing. He exchanged data, we sent our data to him, he did the analysis together with his data. I think this was, it would have been possible, but it was really bringing people together and, and trying to help together. I think now it's getting more complicated because I think certainly we will also miss money to support science in the long term run. And there will be also um, a time where we have to to get more deeper in the COVID research. I think at the beginning, we were looking fast for easy fruits, and now we have to dig deeper to understand better. Um, this will be maybe also a challenge. We, need, we all need to become virologists to some extent. 
But I also learned that this is not an easy field. So I think without knowing something and get have experts to work with, I think we may make a lot of mistakes, <laughs> likely. Mm -hmm. And do you think the change, this sort of strong cooperative uh, spirit, is uh, more temporary or do you think it will stay? I hope it will stay. So I feel that anyway, um, science became already in the last years in comparison to the past more corporate. I can certainly say this for Germany, but I think it's the same for Europe and the world. And I also believe that the, the good side of these video conferences that we can have fast access to to communication, uh, having small groups meeting spontaneously because everybody has now the software and the tools. This may also speed up uh, in interactions. On the other hand, I as many maybe also suffer from video conference and I have to say I really looking forward to the next physical meetings because this, this cannot be compensated. That's true. I think uh, keeping healthy balance is always an important uh, aspect. And uh, with, with all, we've talked a lot about the, your work and the uh, real uh, breadth of it. Uh, with so much uh, work being done, do you still have time for passions? Oh, yes, certainly. So I, I think I have a good work-life balance, particularly also because work, I love my work, so it's part of my life. Um, but I have also, I like cooking, I like eating, I like uh, good wine, I like my flowers. I'm still a biologist in heart, so... Um, there are many things. You cannot yeah. specify which discovery is your favorite, but maybe which flower. Uh, this is difficult. I always <laughs> try to, to make them better. So I even uh, breed specific plants to get the color I like to have, but it's not always working. <laughs> I'm more successful in the lab than on my garden. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, uh, how do you find uh, this balance? Yeah, you say that it's very important to, uh, to, to set uh, a balance in, in your work and in your life. Uh, is there a, a simple secret or it's, it's, it's just uh, uh, more complex? I think there's not simple secrets. I think if you love what you are doing, this is anyway then not a problem. And I, honestly, if we complain of, about having too much to do, it's also a lot our own, um, let's say, mistake because we then wanted to do too much. So um, I think one, one needs to find a balance for each person and you know, have to define what is important for you and then do this what you find is important. I agree. So in the end, uh, uh, let me just ask, what's the future for you? Where do you see your, yourself and what's the next ambition? You, we talked about the success and, uh, and, and uh, various uh, uh, previous experiences, but where are you heading now? So I'm still driven to make something which really helps patients. So currently we invest a lot in these antimers, but I'm not sure whether this will be, we never know whether this can be successful or will be successful. We now work more on this clonal hematobiasis, which is a mutation in blood stem cells, uh, and maybe targeted therapy for immune modulating uh, regulatory pathways in these cells might be a way to go. So you see, I have uh, new ambitions, um, whether they will be successful, yeah, we will see. But the important part is that uh, it's all of them incorporate both uh, basic discovery and uh, clinical delivery, which is actually a motto of Cardiovascular Research Journal, basic discovery driving clinical delivery. So it, uh, from our uh, conversation today, it sounds like uh, uh, this is all sort of a light motif in, uh, uh, in your work as well. So we are very happy uh, to have a chance to collaborate. And uh, it was a huge uh, pleasure to uh, uh, host uh, you here today. And once again, huge congratulations on uh, the gold medal, uh, which is uh, uh, one of the highest uh, awards that uh, one can receive in cardiology. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you very much.